In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the uh, SPI protocol capabilities of your Atiny85 microcontroller to control eight LEDs through this input-output expander IC, which is the MCP23S05. So when you buy this IC, make sure that it has the S in it because there's another one without the S and that one is for the I square C communication, but we're using SPI. So make sure that it has the S in the name. So this is the schematic that you're gonna need to connect. Basically the uh, data in from my at tiny goes to the data out of my IO expander. The uh, data out on my at tiny goes to the data in the clock goes to the clock and PB3 goes to CS so in order to communicate with my IO expander I have to create the following signals my SS pin which is PV3 has to be turned down or uh, it has to change state from 1 to 0 throughout the uh, entire communication so while the while the at tiny 85 is sending data to the IO expander we have to pull PV3 to zero we also have to so this is the uh, the clock that we have to generate if you look at the uh, data sheet on your IO expander it says here that uh, the first thing you need to do is send the uh, IO address which is the uh, device up code so the code that I have to send is 01000 and these two pins on the expander are connected to ground so those are zero and since we want to control the LEDs we want to be able to write to the IO expander so my last bit in the device up code has to be zero so that it's a write and not a read So this is the uh, signal that we have to create on our uh, a tiny microcontroller. So once again, this is my DO line. And this is my clock line. This is my CS line or SS as it is also called. And we don't have to worry about the uh, DI line since we're not reading any data from the IO expander to the ATTIN85. So once you have sent the slave address or the IO expander address, you need to send the register that you want to control. So the register address that we want to control is the IO DER. So the uh, IO expander works pretty much like a microcontroller. First, you have to uh, tell it the direction of the register and then the value of that register. So we want to make all the pins outputs since we're controlling LEDs. So the IO DER is used to control the directions of the pins. So the register address is 00. zero in hexadecimal as you can see in table 1-2 and if we want to make all the pins outputs we have to write the value of, of 0 to each of the pins that we want to make outputs so I have the uh, data sheet references here 1.1.6 when a bit is, uh, let me see when a bit is clear, the corresponding pin becomes an output. So, so with this signal, we're making all the pins connected to the LEDs outputs. So once we have made the uh, pins outputs, we have to turn on the LEDs. I'm gonna be turning on all the LEDs. 
So once again, every time we talk to a separate register in the IO expander, we have to send the slave address the register address and the value for the register so the value or uh, the register that actually controls the the state of the pins is the GPIO register and if you go to table 1-1 one -one of your IO expander data sheet you will see that the register address is 09 so that would be this 8 bits here next is the value of the register if you give it a value of 1 then that LED will turn on if you give it a value of 0 then the LED will turn off so I want all my LEDs on so I have given them all a value of 1 also notice that uh, the data is read when the clock is rising or on the rising edge so that's, that's when uh, you mark your bits and that's also according to the uh, data sheet of the IO expander so now that we know the signals that we have to send let's go ahead and check out the code that is required to send these signals so I have made a couple of constants here to, uh, so instead of using you know like the PV3 or PV1 or PV0 I can use a name that I can actually understand so PV3 is gonna be my chip select or slave select pin PV1 is my data out pin PV0 is my data in pin PV2 is my clock pin so that's all from this circuit I've also created a couple of functions, one called SPI setup, so that sets up the registers needed for the SPI protocol. Set GPIO that, that with the integer value, which is the data that I want to send. So that integer will be the value for the register. For my GPIO, I also created another function called set IO direction and this integer would be the value for that register which in this case is going to be zero for all of the bits so this is my main function here and this is the uh, this is an integer that i called led so they represent each bit in this integer represents each one of my eight leds so I set up the SPI bus, I set the direction for my pins on the IO expander, and then set the values for the LEDs. So in order to set up the SPI bus, you have to make the uh, data out pin, chip select pin, and clock pin outputs since they are the ones that are sending uh, signals to the IO expander and if you ever want to receive signals from the IO expander which it's also a feature that it has then you also need to make your data in pin an input this is my spy configuration bits so if we go and find this bit in the data sheet notice that I have set it to 1 that's because the uh, at tiny 85 has what's called a USI Let me go ahead and show you it has the USI interface and that same uh, interface actually lets you select between SPI and I square C so the USI universal serial interface let you select between two wires which can be used for the I square C and three wires which is used for the spy bus communication and that's what we're doing here 
so by setting this bit to one we are selecting the three wire mode next I have to make my SS pin high according to the signals so my SS pin has to be high and I only pull it down to zero whenever I start sending data and then send it back up to one when I'm done sending data so my set IO their function which is the function that creates this signal is this one here so this is where I bring down the uh, SS pin to zero so that will be here and then I send the three bytes and then I send the uh, signal back up to one so this is 40 zero and then the data that I want to send which uh, in my case is zero since I want to make all the pins outputs so these three bytes here represent these three bytes here the uh, slave address, register address and value for the register similarly for my set GPIO I have the same uh, same steps so my three bytes which is the slave address, GPO, GPIO address and the data So that will be 0x40. This is my register address, which is 9 in hexadecimal. And then it's just going to be 1 since I want all the LEDs on. So that's 40, 0, 9, and all 1s. So now let's take a look at the write spy function. The first thing you need to do is load your data register with the data that you want to send through the SPI bus wires once you have loaded the data you start clocking your data and also your clock so this bit here clocks the uh, that toggles the clock the clock line so each time you set a each time you set this bit to 1 you are toggling this clock so if we were here and you send a 1 then it will change it to 0 if we were at 0 and you set it to 1 it will change it to uh, 1 so it toggles the, uh, the clock it doesn't represent the value of the clock it toggles the clock next in the in my next line the uh, notice that this there's a different bit this bit actually toggles the data register so whenever you call this bit it uh it puts the uh the next bit on the data register on the d outline and no so notice that i do it eight times the reason why i do it eight times is because i have to each time i i call this function I am writing 8 bits so that's why I do it 8 times and notice that for each time I toggle my clock 2 times because in order in order to send 8 bits of data I need to toggle my clock one two three four five six seven eight eight sixteen times so that's why i have this two times here so two times eight is sixteen and this is my data clock so uh, there's eight bits so i just have to do that one eight times but this one sixteen so that is how you use the USI feature of your AtTiny85 for spy boss communications. Thank you for watching.